A broke merchant meets the fox god of wealth. In a village far, far away, lived a wolf that protected the harvests of the village. The wolf promised the youths of that village that it would bring bountiful harvests of wheat. The wolf kept its promise. It kept it for an exceedingly long time. No one knows when it began, but the people of the village would use the phrase the wolf is running when ripe wheat stalks sway in the wind. When ears of wheat were flattened by the wind, they said they were trampled by the wolf. They even said the wheat was eaten by the wolf when the harvest was poor. The village must have really treasured that wolf. They all lived quite happy lives, but that is not the end of the story. After a long time had passed, no one remembered the promise they made with the wolf anymore. The tales of the wolf, which were full of familiarity and awe, eventually just became antiquated stories. Then, in the village, we see some nice tranquility. The clear weather should last until nightfall again, because rain would be troublesome for the nice horse here. The traveling merchant then tells some soldiers about how there's a small village in the mountains about a half day's travel east from here. He is on his way back. After selling some salt, they check his cargo, which is filled with fur pelts and a sheaf of wheat he received from the village. It's a variety of wheat that's strong against the cold and resilient against pests. The merchant, however, does wonder about what's going on, because normally there are not knights like this guy around these parts. The knight tells him that there's been word of a pagan festival being held in the villages around here. While traveling further, the merchant does ponder a bit about the pagans. Then he introduces himself as the traveling merchant, Croft Lawrence. To some people, harvesting wheat looks like quite the harvest this year. He asks them about directions for Yeri. Farmers also tell him how one of the young men there will end up hollow this year. Then he sees a lot of people gathered around talking about some wolf and trying to catch it. Then suddenly, the merchant craft hears some noise near his cargo. Finally, all the people then start cheering for a young man whom they claim has captured the hollow. That guy also recognizes Lawrence and says they will meet later. However, Lawrence does not seem to be very happy about that because then all the people lock the young man inside a barn, and now he won't be able to come out for a week. The villagers are also putting down a lot of wolf dolls around the village. With the arrival of the new king, it looks like the era of praying to the old gods has ended. They have a bad harvest when the wolf is dissatisfied, but they have had no bad harvests with the new farming methods their new king has taught them, and they are even earning a lot, because Lawrence had never thought he'd see this much tranny silver in such a rural area. He was indeed very surprised. The guy who caught the hollow was a student of Lawrence. Unfortunately, he will have to leave quickly, so he cannot meet with him for now. On his way, he stops at night and gives some fresh vegetables to his horse while he decides to sleep. While checking up on his cargo, he finds someone sleeping in it. He shouts for the sound sleeper to wake up, but the sleeper keeps on sleeping, so the merchant tries harder. <laughs> After which he notices wolf-like years on the sleeping beauty. This surprises him as the lady opens her eyes. Then she howls like a wolf. She also has a wolf-like tail. She loves the beautiful moon and then asks Lawrence if he has anything nice to drink. Since Lawrence does not have anything like that, she asks if he has something to eat. Then she sees a piece of dry meat on the ground near him and while she is picking up the meat, Lawrence, who is scared, points a blade at her and asks if she is some kind of witch. The wolf lady does not appreciate this, but notices that the guy must not be from the village. Then she apologizes and then explains that she slipped into his carriage because she wished to leave the village. Her name is Holo. It has been a long time since she took this form. Lawrence knows someone who has been called that name. But the wolf lady says that she has heard of no creature with the name Holo other than herself. Then Lawrence says that it is the name of the god of harvest in this area. Then he wonders if this wolf lady is a god. Now, though she had been called a god and bound to this land for a long time, still, she claims to not be anything so grand. She is only hollow and nothing more. She was not born here, but in a land much farther north, 
where the summers are short and the winters are long, in a world covered in silvery white. She was born in a place called Yoritsu. She is the wise wolf hollow of Yoritsu. Lawrence had never heard of that place. Then suddenly Holo starts feeling chilly, while she does not dislike taking on human form. It is always a very chilly experience. Then Lawrence says that if she really is the wise wolf hollow, then he needs to see some proof. Right now, it seems that just his ears and tail are not proof enough to satisfy him. Only her wolf form will make him believe, but she refuses to take that form. Then Lawrence says that he will just turn her up to the church, as those possessed by the devil will bring calamity upon others. Holo hates the church. Then Lawrence says that maybe they should just go back to the village chief and confirm with him, but Holo refuses that as well. However, Lawrence is willing to allow her to stay with him if she really is Holo, the god of harvest, as he hopes that her wisdom might just bring him some fortune as well. It is impossible for any creature to change forms without paying a price. In her case, she would need blood from the living or a small amount of wheat. They decide to go with the wheat. After eating the wheat, Holo transforms into a big badass wolf, which really scares Lawrence and makes him fall out of his cart. He gets so scared that he goes back to the village and asks to be allowed to stay the night there. They do allow that but ask the reason for such a sudden change. His student, Yori, is also there, so they did meet after all. Lawrence is very thankful, as he also gets to see a luxurious meal. They are all offerings for Holo, but Yeri brought them here since it would be a waste to leave it all for the wolf. But Lawrence is wondering why Yeri is not locked away in the granary for a week so that Holo won't escape from the last sheaf of wheat he harvested. But Yeri does not care. As for him, that is just some superstition. There's no wolf actually living in the wheat fields. It's just an excuse for the people in the village to have a festival. They both had a nice chat and drink, even though his mind kept on thinking about what he saw. Yeri has been bringing in the coins thanks to the stuff that Lawrence taught him about negotiations. Their previous lord just thought about taking more and more taxes from them. No merchant was willing to buy their expensive, tax-inflated wheat at that time. Lawrence actually bought some wheat from them. There weren't many towns willing to work with a new traveling merchant like Yeri. The village and Yeri have both grown a lot since then. Now even merchants from large towns come to buy their wheat. He gets to negotiate prices with big shots like that. Now he wants to try negotiating the price of wheat with Lawrence once again. Just like back then. He is sure that they will have a great harvest next year and the year after that as well. Lawrence also hopes that Holo stays in a happy mood. But according to Yeri, it has nothing to do with wolves. Something like that doesn't exist. They don't need some ancient god. Lawrence decides to go to sleep, but he sees Holo there. Also, she does not want him to keep getting surprised like that. But now Lawrence does believe that she was in the village. Yeah. <laughs> After all, she used to live inside the wheat during the harvest. I am on the last piece of wheat. That's why it's quite difficult to escape from there. However, there are exceptions. If there is a larger amount of wheat than the last sheaf of wheat nearby, she can move to that wheat without being seen by humans. That's how she got inside the cargo of Lawrence. In a way, she owes Lawrence a great debt. Holo wonders if he is still scared of her, even though he was the one who told her to show him her true form. After seeing that form, he got scared of her. That's why he thought she had disappeared from his sight. Humans do show fear when they see her true form. There are very few who have reacted otherwise. There was once such a person in this village. That person asked her to ensure the harvest in this village. That's why she kept her promise. However, having many bountiful harvests is hard on the land. So there were times when she had to create bad harvests. The people of the village just called it her fickleness. Their thoughts of her have grown quite bad these last few years. Next year and the year after that, she is sure that they will have bountiful harvests. Without her, no one needs her any longer. Then Lawrence asks her if he does believe her, there is somewhere she would like to go after leaving the village. 
Then suddenly, a huge wind blows and Holo says she wishes to return to the north. The next day, he leaves for the village. After reaching a safe distance, Holo comes out of the cart, where it was so dark and cramped that it was difficult to even change her clothes, but she did manage to do it. <laughs> now she is wearing clothes that belong to Lawrence, but still, they look quite nice on her. As expected, it is well tailored and made of excellent fabric, making it quite suitable for someone like Holo. She wishes to travel with Lawrence. After thinking for a bit, he allows it. This must be some kind of fate. I hope he takes good care of her from now on. He also introduces himself as Kraft. Lawrence Holo then says that she will continue to speak of his greatness from now to the end of time. However, his profession is not easy, and he expects her to earn her keep. But then again, she is not shameless enough to eat his food without doing anything in return. She is the wise wolf Holo, an honorable wolf. Then he lends her a hand to help her sit next to him. However, she does feel that it is quite cramped with the two of them sitting there. Then she starts getting a bit too close to annoy him. With this, their amazing, wholesome adventure begins. I appreciate you viewing my anime recap, Unruly Family. Please let me know what you think about Spice and Wolf by liking, sharing, subscribing and leaving a comment.